them I'm hungry. My bark is louder. All without speaker. All without speaker. Jamaica! Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, as we now enter the Fort Stewart area of Enfield, this is uh, what it used to be back in the days when I was a kid coming up, right? There was a wonderful walk from Anatabe, which is a little town that will take you right into Enfield. Now, back in the 60s and the 70s, growing up in Enfield was a wonderful, beautiful place. Everybody knows everybody. And um, it was a, a place where you can have fun, people share, and um, it was just a wonderful, beautiful experience as a kid growing up in this Enfield. So we just want you to understand that back in the days, I was extremely poor. My mom and dad were very, very poor. We could not afford much of anything, much less anything. And I want to tell you this, my grandmother, because I didn't get a chance to know my grandfather, but my grandmother was extremely rich. But for some reason, she just didn't like the children of Rodney Sinclair, which is my father. She always turned a bad eye when it comes to us. We couldn't get nothing from the property. Matter of fact, even if we were hungry, and me and my brother Glenn, and my sister Janet, and Yuna, because those were the ones that were actually at that age, in that time, growing up in Enfield, we dare not go to my grandmother's property and take anything. You can't take a breadfruit, you cannot take a pear, you cannot take a tangerine, and you cannot take an orange, because she disliked us so much. She told me at one time that, Claude, you're not a stone. You do not belong to my son, Rodney. And I felt very bad as a kid growing up. I really, really felt bad because everybody had a grandparent that they used to hug and kiss and so on. But I never had the opportunity to hold my grandmother and, and, and hug her and tell her how much I love her and appreciate her. You know, my father's mother. And it still bothers me to this day to know that I have done so much with my life. You know, I've met a lot of people, I've been introduced to a lot of grandparents and so on, but I've never had the opportunity to actually sit down with my grandmother, you know, and um, have a rapport. So, it, it really hurts. This is part of the journey that really hurts, but guess what? It's gonna get better. All right, so just sit tight. This little bridge here can only hold one vehicle at a time. I remember when I was about five years old because I used to play in the river I came down with pneumonia and me coming down with pneumonia my father had a 150 bike I'll never forget and um, I took sick say about one o'clock in the morning and my father would put me on that little 150 bike and ride me all the way in the dark because picture this there was no street light there was no form of electricity in the 60s, growing up in Enfield. So in the pitch of darkness, my father would, 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 would you know, ride and take us to the hospital using this stretch of road. Very dark, very, very dark, all right? So stay tuned, the journey continues with Big Stone and the trek to Enfield. God. Martin Triller, we're now left here now. So we're gonna join the, back, um, the wagon and hit the streets. And feel we say, yeah, but you think you get well? Give him the little piece of truth. <laughs> but now get well. Friend, but now be a friend. Should I say? Friend enemy, watch them up enemy like them will want to see the enemy. But friend enemy, them up enemy. Hey, a bit of chat, them are enemy. Friend enemy, watch them up enemy. Can't trick me with your enemy. Friend enemy, watch them up enemy. Friend enemy, watch them up enemy. Can't trick me with your enemy. Can't trick me with your enemy. Friend enemy, watch them up enemy. Can't trick me with your enemy. Can't trick me with your enemy. Same one say bless up, and them same one who da eat your flesh up. Hey. 
See a wolf them dress up In a sheep clothing they when you want to trick the rest up But when time is step up Them a fee move and go one side Yes them a fee get up There's no need fighting me Cause Jah is a light in me Friend enemy Watch them up enemy Like them will want to see the enemy Friend enemy Watch them up enemy A bear tough chat them a send on me I'll bless you if Martin should not deliver Big up big stone. Yeah, me I tell you man and the journey continues. Right, Tony? We have more for seeing at Enfield. It's just Mr. Willie's shop. But the whole part of the place you see. So don't touch your dial, you know. We're coming right back. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome once again to In the Street with Big Stone. Today is a very special day for me because I get an opportunity to come back from where it all started. This started well over 50 years ago when I was a little kid. But I grew up in this beautiful parish of St. Mary in the beautiful district of Enfield. This is one of the famous spots that I used to go bathing when I was a little kid. Alright, so I just want to share it with you. I'm here having fun. I met my new cameraman Tete. You know what I mean? He's up there blazing up the high grade. And we're just having fun here on the river. And I'm having fun. Me got swimming. I mean, I'm not the phone on the YouTube. Me got have some fun. How old are you, man? How old are you? You're 12. I remember when I was only, what, five years old? Six years old, seven years old, I used to come here. That is over 50 years ago. That's a long time. Shh. Don't tell nobody that. <laughs> but that's a long time. Look how beautiful Jamaica is. If we only could just love each other and respect each other and you know just have a wonderful time in this beautiful country. You know, half the people here, I don't even the first time I've seen these kids in my life, but I respect them and they respect me. You know, it's a two-way street for respect. So if you really want to have some fun, I don't care where you are, any place you are in the world, your meek is still nice. Gentlemen, when big stone jump, all the water is going to disappear. You're not going to see no more water no more, alright? So please, take your last part at my home, because here I come. A tsunami. How was that? That was a that was a big splash. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome once again on this famous tour of Enfield. Myself, Big Stone, and Tony Gutsmore. It's just taking it through the community, and for those who left here at a young age, we kind of refresh your memory to show you what the place looked like now in 2015. This stone, this great big stone, is where I got my name from. Now let me tell you how the name Big Stone came and my family. Now my great grandfather was very poor because the Sinclair family was very poor. We were very poor. We were a very poor family growing up in this community. And um, this stone was like a shelter rock. Because when we were kids, you could actually go underneath this stone and shelter from the rain. Now, I don't even think I can fit. <laughs> can I fit underneath the stone anymore? I don't think I can fit underneath the stone anymore. But this is it. This is a great big stone. My great grandfather was very poor. And um, at about 6 o'clock, you know, back in the days, 6 o'clock is dark. 6 o'clock is like midnight. So it was drizzling a little bit. So my father was, my grandfather was coming from Juniper. So he decided to come underneath the stone and, you know, shelter from the rain. While he was underneath the stone, he was mumbling to himself because, you know, time was so hard. And he kept saying, boy, I've already picked them. And I don't know how I'm going to take care of this picnic. 
these children because the money is not there. You know what I mean, Tony? But my father did not, my grandfather did not know that there was a man standing on the top of the stove. So while he was there underneath the stove talking to himself, I said, my God, I do not know how I'm going to make it out. The man said on the top of the stone, I see a sicker man than you make it. You see when my great grandfather heard a man on top of the stone, he didn't know it was on top of the stone. He actually thought this, the stone was talking to him. So what he did was he ran like 10 crazy men and got to Enfield. I said, people in Enfield, I was sheltered underneath this big stone. And while I was there talking to myself, the stone talked back at me. <laughs> so ladies and gentlemen, there you have it. That is how my great-grandfather got the name Big Stone. This is the stone. But I can tell you something though, Tony. And this is what I realize. It is like a birthright. When I say it's like a birthright, I notice of all the children from my great-grandfather coming down the, that the name Big Stone sticks on was one that is excellent. My father was very poor, but he could read and write very well. As a matter of fact, my father could read and write so well that they had him um, doing the duties sometimes of a pastor, committing body to the ground and talking at funerals and talking on political platform and all that. But this stone brings great, 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 great memories to me. All right, and I thought I would share it with the world. Tony, any fond memories of this great big stone right here? This is our land. <laughs> tell me, tell us some more of this big story. I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you. In our generation, we went to school in Enfield, which we will visit shortly. We'll visit the school shortly, uh, right? And uh, this stone, like you said, is significant to your family because it actually gives you <laughs> and, it, um, and it is befitting that some prominent person should Tell carry what you want. Yes. this school <laughs> because of the numerous activities that take place here. In my earlier time at school, of course there were no knives and sticks and so so there when we have a little group grievances, we used to be very pugilistic about it. Pugilistic! You know this how Tony used this word? Yeah. We are very pugilistic about it. We would tend to think, all right, man, all right, we have to lose one a big stone. This was like a, a, a marking yes, spot. Yes, like, yes. This, is, this a, is where the fight starts. Invest. It's a combat zone. Yes, yes. Right here, yes. this big stone so, right there. You know, if you, you have a, a bone to pick with a man, you then tell it, meet me a big stone. All right, come out of the road, come out of the road. Therefore, it became well known as a place where we split ears and have our differences sorted out once and for all. You know what? You know what came to my mind, though, Tony? Seriously. Whenever I get very, 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 very rich, because it's going to happen, there's no doubt about it. Big Stone is going to be a multi billionaire. All right? I plan to come here late one night with a truck and thief the store there. But I know I could not get out of Enfield with this stone. Because, not because my family got the name Big Stone from this stone. I don't own this stone. This stone belongs to the people of Enfield. And the people of Enfield would do me bodily harm if I come and take this great landmark. Alright? So, um, it is a privilege and pleasure once again for me to bring you here from the four corners of the world and to show you that out of humble places, greatness can appear. Uh, good evening ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the grand finale of a documentary of Enfield. Um, I had a wonderful, beautiful, spectacular time touring familiar grounds with my friend Tony Gutsmore and I want to say thank you very much Tony for taking time out of your great visit
the schedule to accommodate us here, myself and Firestone, and to explain to the world the rich legacy of Enfield. Now we're at Macro. Now Tony says, as far as he can remember, over 60 years, this hole has been here. Tell us a little bit more. It has always been here. It has been a natural place where we come in the evening after work, have our bath, and on Sunday evening it will be like a picnic. The entire community is here, we will be cooking, we will be having our bath. We're really enjoying ourselves. Sometimes we have the music right here. We play the music here sometimes. <laughs> yeah, having a grand time. Um, when Fred Food season comes around, this is when I really start the season. We just sat with it and I closed the Fred Food up by how much bread food? 200 bread food, ladies and gentlemen, were put on the fire. And that community is coming to take up a bread food. Bread food is actually inside with them. And just have a bar. Have a bar. And it is always in my mind as a place of significance. If you scan, right, like Tony was telling you, scan all the way and look at this tree. Uh, we're, 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 we're taking our headers from up here. All the way from up top, Tony used to go. And jump! And jump back. We climb on those trees and go on that lead here and get the wire down. <laughs> yeah! Sorry! Um, I, I remember one day, yeah, a number of us came here and, you know, one of my friends get into difficulty out here. And I was saying, you don't even see why I jump. And I was like, so Tony, in party, who you want to shout out to? Want to say a big thank you to Maureen Cutsmore for making the idea of using Tony as our chaperone, as our tour guide. Because I don't think anybody in Enfield District know about this district. As you know, I'm here with Timothy. And Timothy is a very good friend, friend of the family for years. And um, while we were here talking, he was telling me about this chicken that he raised from scratch. Tell us about this chicken. There is motherless. You see, find him out the bush there. Yeah. And brought him in to a first store and put him down in a little yes. box. So he squared them actually and the dog eat one. And he was bawling, 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 cutting cuddle up together, sleep every night. So we go there by the fence and take him up in my hand and put him in my hand. And he bawling, bawling, and feed him out of my hand. And he pick out the end of one and pick out, pick out, pick out, pick out. And from me going to that stage, from baby stage. Feed him till him turn adult. See him there? See him right there? Yeah, that's him right there. Right there. So right let's there. see what happens if he's gonna recognize the person who gave him life. You know, he's busy eating right now as you can see. Flittering through, see if he can find a roach here <laughs> or there. But let's see if he's gonna come and perch on Timothy. Yes. You already know to go to your bed. You see me sit down here with him. Mm -hmm. You see him that look at him fly right up on my head. I'm gonna want to do it tonight, I'm gonna be there. I'm gonna sit, right? Yes, I like to himself. Big up to the world. I know that all over the world there are envious people. And 
just thinking of this like this, like all, you know, you know, I'm just doing injustice. So a lot of people, I can't remember everybody. So I just want to say, pick up and remember him, and remember who I'm coming. And be a part of the contribution to the development of NP as the Bola. That was wonderfully said by um, Tony Gutsmore. And there are a few things I want to bear in mind. I want to pick up the friends of uh, Enfield for every year, for the last, what, how many years? Five years. For the last five years, the friends of Enfield have been coming back. People that was born here, that is right across the world, some in Canada, some in the United States, some in England, some in all parts of the world. But they select what, in August? No. In August, every year for the last five years, they come back to Enfield, and, and they give back to the community. They bring the community centers, they do all kind of community work to strengthen and build the community. So for those who are out there, what are some of the, 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 the people that are involved, the name of the, uh, the organization that is that? Well, your friends of Enfield, you know? Friends of Enfield, and it's the Enfield Community Development Council. The Enfield Community, community Development Council. And to them we have been able to do a lot of things. I think one of the most important things to me, yeah. you know, that whole week of celebration is the week of social interaction where community youngsters come together and they start to tend for our elders. Yeah. Go in and pay them, cut their nails and wow. you know, it's, it's a really fabulous thing to see. And you know, we want to continue the trend and to see the youngsters knowledgeable and aware of where we want to go and where we're coming from. Well, Tony, thank you very much, my brother. I know you're not going to come in the water, but fast on the camera, Mr. Walena. I want to pick up fast on production for working assiduously with us in capturing this great legacy and this great history. Fast on! Whoa!